All right, guys. It is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous, over-the-top beautiful day. Here in the collapse of everything on this spectacularly gorgeous, it is now a Wednesday afternoon, September 4th, 2024. And I have gotten some weird messages from folks that this channel has been hacked by some foul-mouthed lunatic uh, from some other channel. And I don't know what that is all about. Uh, they're claiming there's some sort of imposter taking over the Daily Chronicle of the Collapse. And so uh, while I try to figure out how Collapse Chronicles has been hacked by some nut job talking about things like space aliens and stolen elections and corona panic. We're going to go over here to medium.com and uh, so yesterday, what was the word of the day yesterday was in shitification. In shitification and today we're going to look at some kind of related terms like illusions, delusions, and disillusionment uh, to try to figure out what that uh, crazy man was talking about in that other video. I think, uh, if I understand, he was basically talking about like a combination of illusions, delusions, and disillusionment with all of the illusions and delusions. But we're going to start with the word disillusionment. And this is Richard Lowenthal uh, giving us a two-part book-length treatise on dis illusionment and we are going to touch on this when we get back to our ain't gonna happen roundup on Friday but I just want to share Richard Lowenthal's uh, definition of disillusionment and then we will head over and see what Indica has to say about this general subject. Take it away Richard Lowenthal. What is Disillusionment. <clears throat> Disillusionment is a much maligned and misunderstood phenomenon in a vital aspect of conscious evolution. Since it, since it, meaning disillusionment, has become quite widespread and will soon be nearly universal, we need to understand what it signifies and learn how to assimilate its lessons. Disillusionment, by definition, means the removal or loss of illusions. This sounds quite positive since we all want to be, quote, in touch with reality, or do we? Why, if we do, does disillusionment have such a dark negative connotation? Why do people usually dread it? The answer is obvious, though not very palatable. We fear disillusionment because illusion is not the, excep the exception in our lives. It is the rule. We are raised on a diet of multiple illusions and identify with our illusions using them to help create our sense of self. In fact, it can be argued that human beings are primarily identifying animals rather than rational animals, and what we identify with largely determines how we think, act, and live. So, if we are deeply identified with countless destructive or limiting illusions, unending pain and problems result. 
And of course, some people would make some snarky comment about doomers right about here. But uh, we might come back to this rant on Friday, uh, you know, before Richard dives into all of his hopium smoking. But if, if you ever want to get rid of the hopium smoking, you can always come over here to Indica. Indica, uh, this fellow from over there in Sri Lanka, and he's kind of talking about uh, the same subject that that nutcase ranting uh, who took over this channel was talking about and Richard was just talking about, and it all ties into enshittification. And so Indica is, is, is getting, uh, just getting distraught here today. I feel like I am going crazy because the world has gone mad. And then it starts out that uh, Indica, you know, in his never-ending Gaza rant, he has uh, Gaza derangement syndrome, just like Caitlin Johnstone and a, and a lot of other people. Uh, you can't blame the guy on one level, but, but dude, we get it. Uh, so anyway, I almost just skipped over this uh, today's essay because I just thought it was another broken record Gaza rant, but uh, I managed to scroll down and uh, get uh, dig a little deeper than Gaza. Take it away, Indica. I know the Buddha said this world is suffering. I have heard Allah say the most excellent abode is with God. I believe Jesus when he said store up your treasures in heaven. God knows they have told us enough that it still hurts to realize it for yourself. I had been coming to a theoretical understanding that America was the great Satan years ago. COVID made it clear that they were at least passively anti-human and the genocide of Gaza has shown us how actively evil they are. But I must admit I was happy when this was an academic exercise. As much as I knew this great evil was real, I didn't really want to know. The Buddha said this life was illusion, but I always liked the illusion. But now all illusions are falling apart and I am left with Siddhartha's dilemma at least 100 lives too early. I just have to suffer through this one. The illusions turned obvious delusions are the press, free speech, elections, international institutions, all the things that were supposed to protect us turn out to just empty slogans painted on our prison walls. The decent journalists I knew were relegated to obscure corners of the internet and now they're being arrested or harassed in their homes. The platforms that I read them on are censored or prosecuted. Even a lowly blogger like me has a file with Whitney Bulger's real crew and can't travel reliably anymore. In the long run, where I work, I know that the empire will fall, but in the short term where I live, it feels like they're striking back just fine. Here's this Gramsci showing up for the second day in a row. As Gramsci sort of said, the old world is dying and the new one is struggling to be born. Now is the time of monsters. We are, too many of us, trapped inside a white empire 
that will only crush more and more of us as it falls, including most of God's creation, the animals. They both paved paradise and want to bomb it to rubble on the way out. They would rather make money on complete destruction than admit they've gone wrong. They'd rather crash the whole ecosystem than see their precious economy be uncomfortable for even a quarter. And they'd rather kill children every day for years than admit even one colony is wrong. Quote Israel as is, as I've said, just the collapse within collapse within collapse. Collapse and all the illusions in the world can't keep reality out much longer. People have been calling it for centuries, millennia really, but now the apocalypse has shown up with all of its horsepower. As William Gibson said, the future is here, it's just not evenly distributed. We are all Palestinian in the long run. For years I have been able to write about the end of the world as we know it and still feel fine, as if I will be able to eat, I told you so. I don't know what I've been thinking. I honestly turned that part of my brain off when I closed my laptop. My job has been analyzing the perilous state of the world, but I have not had to struggle to survive. It was really an academic exercise. But now my subjective perspective is bleeding into my objective reality, and everywhere I look, I see blood out of the corner of my eye. One cannot gaze so long into the abyss without the abyss gazing back, and it's dark inside. I'm empathetically exhausted. I am compassionately cratered, and I am doing the least. I think about the people directly living through this, directly, lose, directly losing through this, and I feel even worse. I feel what they're saying emphatically, and I've read such things, but it's every day now, and I'm, and I'm just scratching the surface a million voices cry out in hunger and, hung, and hundreds are silenced forever every night. The doses keep adding up and it's well past a humanly tolerable level. And Lord, is my battery, let's see if we're erasing the battery again. Uh, empathy is no longer something I feel for other people. It feels for me, and it feels like I am losing my mind. Every single day, some new atrocity is discovered, some old abomination is repeated, and then they do it again tomorrow after lying and arresting the messengers for trying. The little doses of distant pain add up till it all hits way too close to home, till it actually hurts inside. A lot of people I know ha have turned away. I don't begrudge them this. I do it myself all the time. But if I just look out my window or see undisassembled concrete or drink water, it all comes back to me like a bat out of hell. Perhaps we're all like this, mourners at a wedding pretending that the bride has not died. Perhaps we are all falling apart inside <coughs> and only pretending on the outside. 
like Poe's Mask of the Red Death, where everyone pretends until they all drop dead. I feel like everyone has been st stacking trauma since Corona Panic and just pretending to go back to a normal that does not exist. We keep expecting something from a culture that has long since become unacceptable. Younger generations will not be burdened with such delusions of grandeur. Olds you know, old folks like me have known the peak of a wave that was supposed to raise all boats, but they'll only but they, meaning the youngsters, will only know decline and rising sea levels. They will expect the worst, and they won't be disappointed. As a writer, I must admit that I always wanted to live through history, but oh boy, does it suck in real time. I grew up in the 90s, which I thought was mind-numbingly boring, but those were the good drugs in hindsight. Now I am on the cusp of history, and I just feel like throwing up and crying all the time. The more I learn, the less I want to know. The more I dig, the deeper it gets. The more I understand, the more it is beyond understanding. How do you analyze when you're emotionally paralyzed? How do you write, W-R-I-T-E, such wrong? How are we expected to live through so much dying. Ah, there you go. Uh, <laughs> so, with that, uh, with that cheery little note from uh, Indica on this gorgeous day, I think I'm going to go out and uh, dig some holes and uh, plant some milkweed plants to save the monarchs while I still can. <laughs> uh, illusions, delusions, and disillusionment here in the and shittification of everything on this spectacularly gorgeous day on the planet. Get out there and enjoy your illusions while you still can. Bye, guys. <laughs>